The main heat source in most chemistry labs is the Bunsen burner. It produces an open gas flame burning at a high temperature. There's always the danger of an accident if it's not used properly. For example, it should never be used to heat volatile organic liquids that give off flammable vapors. These substances should be heated in a heating mantle or a steam bath in a hood. But for most other substances, a Bunsen burner is an ideal heat source when used properly. There are several types of Bunsen burners, but they all have the same basic parts. The gas comes from an outlet on the lab bench. A rubber hose fits over the tip and over a similar fitting on the Bunsen burner. Most burners have a valve at the bottom to control the flow of gas. Air inlets control the amount of oxygen in the flame. A wing top can be placed on the burner to spread the flame out. There are several important rules to follow to use a Bunsen burner safely. First, check the gas hose for cracks. If you see any, get a new hose. Make sure the hose fits securely on the gas valve and on the Bunsen burner. The gas valve at the bottom of the burner should be open. You can light a Bunsen burner with a striker or a match. Open the gas line valve and light the burner. If the flame's properly adjusted, you can place the burner under your setup. When using a match, strike it away from you. Turn the gas on after the match is burning. That way, gas won't escape while you're striking the match. Light the gas from the side so the match isn't blown out. A yellow flame is too cool. Opening the air holes lets in more oxygen for combustion. Adjust the bottom valve if the flame is too large or small. The flame should be blue with a lighter inner cone. The tip of the inner cone is the hottest part of the flame. If the flame begins to sputter or flare, turn the gas off immediately. Also turn the gas off immediately if the flame goes out. Unburned gas escaping into the room could ignite and cause an explosion. Even when the burner seems to be working properly, if you smell gas, turn it off. Cracks or stars in glassware are dangerous. They can break open when it's heated. So before you heat any glassware, check it carefully for cracks or stars. Flat-bottomed containers are normally heated on a wire screen on a ring stand. Erlenmeyer flasks and other narrow-necked containers should be secured to the stand with a clamp. Test tubes can be heated in a water bath. The water bath transfers heat slowly and evenly to the test tube and helps keep it from boiling over. You can also heat a test tube directly in the flame. Hold it at an angle while moving it back and forth to distribute the heat evenly. Aim it away from yourself and your neighbors in case it boils over. Only heat containers with openings. A boiling liquid changes to gas, which must be able to escape. Gas can't escape from a closed container, and the pressure that builds up can burst it. Be extra careful when working with heated equipment. Hold hot glassware in beaker tongs, never your hands. 
remember that the wire screen and ring stand are also hot. If you don't have tongs, protect your hands with gloves designed for hot glassware. Keep them away from the flame. Handle everything as if it's hot if you've been using a Bunsen burner. Glass and metal look the same when hot as they do when they're cold. Heat volatile organics in a heating mantle or steam bath in a hood, not over a Bunsen burner. Check the gas hose for cracks. Make sure the hose fits securely on the gas valve and Bunsen burner fittings. Stand back from the burner while lighting it. Strike matches away from you. Turn on the gas after lighting the match. Turn the gas off immediately if the flame sputters, flares, or goes out, or if you smell gas. Check glassware for stars or cracks. Clamp narrow-necked containers to the ring stand. Move test tubes back and forth through the flame at an angle while heating. Don't heat closed containers. Hold hot glassware in beaker tongs or hot mitts. Thermometers are one of the most important tools in the chemistry laboratory. They're easy to use, but since they're usually made of glass, they have to be handled properly. One common misconception is that lab thermometers have to be shaken down like medical thermometers. Shaking is totally unnecessary, and it can be dangerous. The liquid inside can move freely up and down on its own without shaking. Some lab reactions take place at higher temperatures than an alcohol or mercury thermometer can stand. The temperature of oxidation in a Bunsen burner flame is around 600 degrees Celsius. That high a temperature will vaporize the liquid inside. The resulting pressure will break the glass. But most lab experiments are conducted at temperatures from 120 degrees Celsius down to minus 20 degrees. And for that range, either a mercury thermometer or an alcohol thermometer is suitable. No matter which type you use, always treat it carefully. When you're finished with it, Set it down where it will be safe. Lay it away from the edge of the bench on a wire screen or towel so it can't roll off. When a thermometer breaks, the glass and any liquid that spills out must be cleaned up and disposed of properly. This is a job for your teacher. Glass fragments can be swept up if any alcohol happens to escape from the glass, it can be wiped up with a paper towel. Cleaning up a broken mercury thermometer is more difficult and also a job for your teacher. Mercury is poisonous and it won't soak into a paper towel. Mercury vapors also can escape into the air. If you work with mercury thermometers, your lab may be equipped with a mercury cleanup kit or sponge. The kit and broken glass should be disposed of in the proper container. Don't shake thermometers. Use thermometers only in the temperature range they're suited for. Lay thermometers down on a towel or wire screen to cool, away from the edge of the bench. Let your teacher clean up broken thermometers. 